you know, the two, two girls, I'm not sure if both of them passed away, but I, they were two sisters at the, at, uh, you know, a local school here. And unfortunately, um, they, I don't know that if it's been proven or not, but you know, at least what the, what the paper was saying is that, you know, there was some, some potential like drug use and one of them did pass away. And so it's like, you know, it's like almost like you can't, you know, not, I'm not condoning what I'm about to say, but it's like, there's a lot of people that when they, when they get out of, you know, the wings or the arms of their parents and they go to school and they go to colleges or whatever, um, you know, maybe they never partied a day in their life, but when they get to there, it's kind of like they're, they're trying to like figure out who they are mm-hmm. outside of their parents. And it's almost like you can't ever do that. Like they're, that's just not acceptable anymore. Like you can't just go experiment, you know, with, with something or, you know, some party favor, let's just call it that. You can't, there's just, it's, it's, you're, you're now you're playing with life or death yeah. and that's a huge fucking gamble. Well, and that's, that's one of the things like I, I've been trying to go into schools, um, and, and reach out to that younger crowd a little bit. Mm-hmm. Cause you're right. Like back in the day, man, like there was that experimental phase and I'm not going to say it was safe, but it wasn't a life or death situation every night. And now you, you don't know what you're getting. Yeah. And that's what I try to tell these kids, parents, like, just keep an eye on your kids. And for the kids, they need to know what's out there. Um, they lack the life experience to really know what they're getting into. Um, and we've seen a huge increase in juvenile overdoses over the last two years. Um, that's been fatal, non-fatal, and it's just across the board. And there's, there's some accidental ones, too. People don't know what they're getting into. Mm-hmm. One of the biggest threats with fentanyl is, you know, these, the kids are going out and they think they're getting Percocets or they're getting Oxys or they're getting a counterfeit pill Mm. that's actually got fentanyl in it. And you don't know how much is in each pill. Some of those pills, we send them off to the labs, they come back with trace amounts of fentanyl in them. And then some of them come back with seven to eight milligrams of fentanyl in them. And it takes about two milligrams of fentanyl to be fatal for somebody that hasn't built up a tolerance. Sure. So, um, yeah, it's scary. And, you know, the, the pill manufacturers are making these, these counterfeit pills. They're targeting youth. They're targeting the juveniles um, through their, their marketing strategies, the types of pills they're making. They're making colorful pills, rainbow pills. Hmm. And that's who they're, they're targeting. Yeah. Uh, that's jacked up. It's what, yeah, it's, it's, it's horrific. I mean, if you really think about it, um, you know, that, that makes me think about something is that, <laughs> I mean, I don't really quite know how I want to say this, but you know, so if, if you're targeting the youth, I mean, is, is your goal, like if, if you were these drug traffickers or these pill manufacturers, is your goal to, you know, harm your end user, right? Your uh, quote unquote, your client, let's just call it that. If you kill your client, they can't come back and spend more money. So it's like, in my head, it's like, you know, when you guys are sending off, like maybe in these large seizures, um, you know, if you send off a thousand pills, is there one or 10 or a hundred that are, that are over? I mean, like what, have you, have you guys kind of found out what that ratio is or is it just. It, it really depends on the actual seizure itself. Um, I think I saw a stat DEA reported like one out of every 10 pills. Jesus. Is potentially a fatal. 